obviously said before, uh, Senator Collins Smith is here. Thank you. Do you have any comments that you'd like to make? Just glad to be here, and we thank the director for being present today. Thank you. Um, I just have a, a couple of questions, then we'll open up to the floor. One I noticed on looking at this sheet, and we got a lot of documents out there, so we'll try to reference specifically. I don't see anywhere where any of the actions are weighted. I see there's a completion bar out there, but that completion bar, I guess, assumes that everything carries an equal weight, whereas you would think if we have a September 30th deadline on something, that would be weighted pretty high. Can you explain to me how, what the internal processes are for you to weight issues to make sure we're taking care of the most important things? Why don't I start, and then I can turn it over to whoever would like to take it. Um, it's an excellent question. Um, to to be blunt, we have dealt with it this time as everything pretty much equal. We got to get it all done, so one way or another. Versus um, saying, "Oh, let's try to just do a few and work our way." What happens though is when you start on these um, and you go through them, a they they begin to bucket themselves. Certain things, several of the findings flow from um, certain act. Well, like the timely filing edit and that action that came from it. And so several of the findings are resolved when the action occurs around those. So we bucket them and go, all right, these all will be fixed when we're able to take the following actions. Um, and then others are um, uh, specific findings to a specific division. Uh, for example, it's not included here on Medicaid, but we had some findings around uh, DCFS or DCCECE, and there would be no reason for them not to tackle their findings at the same time that Medicaid is tackling theirs. So we really do it in the sense of which ones address the most, which steps are the more, more straightforward to take, the easiest, and which will take longer because it requires outside partners and more work. And from that, We've been trying to set more of a, I've been trying to work with everybody to set more of a timeline around what's realistic as to when those particular elements can be done. Um, fingerprints, for example, involved dealing with the FBI and the state police, which is more complicated than something we can do ourselves, like improve internal controls. So. Yeah, I understand that when you're trying to catch up, everything has a catch up priority. So you're trying to dig out and get up to date. So I understand that it sounds like you have that built-in uh, procedure as an administrative procedure. As we talk about these, everything comes down to a process. And however, not having people, the right people in place, it makes no difference what your process is. Do you feel like we have staff who have the institutional knowledge in key positions to achieve the outcome we need? Tough question. Um, it's, a tough, it's a tough thing we're going through. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a critical it point because you, you can have all the processes you want, and we've talked several times, and I, I truly believe you have a good grasp, uh, but whether or not we have the people institutionally who've been there long enough to understand what you want to achieve is a, is a critical part of it. it, just, it doesn't, my experience has been that we have some gaps. Yes, sir. Um, yes, I, I'd say that's very, very fair. Um, you know, um, and none of this, we do have at DHS really hard-working people, and in the management, I I think, and as I've said to you before, I'm really amazed by how hard people work and how um, how open they are to working beyond levels they've worked before, right, and really pushing themselves. With that, we do face issues being able to always bring in or and there are 
are places where we don't always have the talent to promote up. Right? People haven't had enough time, they haven't had the experience. We have had issues around being able to fill key positions. Um, Misty Bowen Eubanks has been great as the interim CFO, but Misty is still the interim CFO. Uh, she's been in that position since November. Um, I've been here two years and three months, and in that time I've had two permanent CFOs. The first one um, passed away unexpectedly, and then we brought in a contractor for a while who became permanent, but then left after a few months to return home to Mississippi. And that's when Misty stepped in, and we have been looking for a CFO since then. Um, we um, have had, so yes, we are trying to grow our bench of people with knowledge in areas. I am seriously looking at um, expanding the use of contracted personnel in certain specialized areas um, because it's some of this is dealing with very, very complex areas that um, there's just not the knowledge. We are also doing, I'm also focused on doing what we can to build the knowledge base of the people we have, right? So um, we are in the process of, uh, Misty and I are working on uh, developing a couple of um, that will bring in some short-term expertise to do risk assessment around our financial controls and then a separate one to do a risk assessment for us around our um, Medicaid financial controls. That will give us a roadmap of what we need to strengthen, get those done this quickly this fall, and then this new office of internal con controls can work with finance and with the programs to fill the gaps that we see there. My experience has been that when we can't find people, it's because it's not an attractive job. They're hard jobs. They're hard jobs. Work hard, long hours, and the pay is not uh, what someone in the private sector or another sector may be able to make. Is that what we're facing here? I, I think it is. I am um, for for good and for bad. Um, I think it's well known around uh, around circles that the. the team at DHS works very, very long hours under a lot of pressure. And while we keep trying to fill the ranks, which will help relieve some of that pressure, um, it's, uh, we, it just takes some time. But it may be a problem you see around government in general over the years um, where, you know, it, it's hard for all organizations now, I think public and private, to maintain that upward movement as people tend to move around more. And so making sure that you have, I keep talking about a bench, making sure you have a bench that's there that can move up or cross train so that you can make sure if somebody leaves you or gets sick, there's someone else who can do that job. Um, just some of these fundamentals that we've got to get put in place. Thank you. Thank you. Specifically, 